YouTube. Today, talk about the Glock 20 10 millimeter. This is the 20 SF, and this is the 21 SF that I've had for a while, just for comparison. They're both safe and empty. Mag is empty. Chamber is empty. Got a package today. It's going to open. I usually don't do package opening videos, but I figured I would on this one. Just to... Let's see. This is a something I bought off eBay. The shipping was rather slow. I will say that much. What it is is a cold steel recon one now if you've watched any of my other videos which most people haven't and i don't blame you you know that i do carry a cold steel recon a lot of the times this is the mini recon which is still sort of on the big side this is the full size recon as you can see, they come with the black coating on the blade. And I will take this apart promptly and bead blast it off and sand down the G10 handles under the clip. That's just something you have to do to all of them. All the cold steels. But the only reason I bought this one, it's rather large. I'd say it's a four inch blade, maybe four and a quarter. But they're using a new USA-made steel. Now, the knife is still made in Taiwan. So, it's still an overseas-made knife that I really don't care about beating up. But they are using, supposedly, a USA-made Carpenter CTS-XHP alloy. So I wanted to try that steel. I'm not sure how it compares to the Allsate or the 154CM or anything like that. But I figured I'd give it a try on a knife I could beat up and just see what it was all about. But that's that. The video, though, is about the Glock 20. Now, I wasn't in the market for a Glock 20. Wasn't in the market for a 10 millimeter, But this one come along it was a good deal i couldn't pass it up so the glock 20 sf is essentially the exact same size as the glock 21 sf other than it shoots the 10 millimeter instead of the 45 acp the 10 millimeter hasn't been around terribly long it was developed in the early 80s it's been around about 10 years longer than the 40 smith and wesson but it's an interesting story. After it had been in production a while, the FBI started to adopt the 10 millimeter, but it turned out that the recoil and the size of the handguns that shot the round were too large. The recoil was too much for the pansies that worked in the office of the FBI, and they couldn't qualify with it, so... It ended up getting shortened down and made into what is known now as the 40 Smith & Wesson, which a lot of people refer to as the 40 short and weak or the 40 short and wimpy. But either way, the, interestingly enough, though, the FBI still uses the 10 millimeter for their hostage rescue teams and for their special weapons and tactic teams. So they still issue it to the real men in the FBI. Now, another interesting fact about the 10 millimeter is Denmark issues it to its soldiers that are stationed in Greenland for defense against polar bears. So that says something about the round when they'll trust it to take down a polar bear. Now the 10 millimeter is gaining in popularity now. There's a few more manufacturers that make one. Kimber makes one. ATI makes one. SIG even makes one now. Of course, the Glock 20 and the Glock 29, which is the compact version of 
this. It's almost, uh, it's identical to the Glock 30. But there's many, many things you can read about the power of the 10 millimeter. The 10 millimeter is more powerful than the 45 ACP, hands down, no matter how you look at it. 10 millimeter is one of the, it's the only rimless handgun cartridge that you can hunt whitetail deer with. So, the 10 millimeter is a powerful round. This Glock 20 has been called by people that know a lot more than me the most powerful handgun you can buy, period. Now, you can buy a Desert Eagle with a 44 Magnum or a 50 Action Express with a more powerful round, but it's not going to hold near as many. This has 15 plus 1 rounds, 10 millimeter. This 10 millimeter round comes in between a 357 and a 41 Magnum. Loaded as hot as you can get it, it'll almost reach up to a 44 Magnum power. So the 10 millimeter is nothing to sneeze at. And this, like I said, is called by many people that know way more than I do about firearms and ammo, the most powerful handgun you can buy, period. Due to the a number of rounds it holds and the power of the 10 millimeter. So, I don't know what you would use this for. A lot of people that I've read about would use this and carry it if they're in the hunting in a place where there's bears, maybe wild hogs. A lot of people use it to hunt wild hogs. You could use it to hunt white-tailed deer legally. So it has a purpose, I guess. If you want the most powerful handgun in the world, I guess that would be a reason to buy it. If you can't handle the most powerful handgun in the world, you will probably step down to the Glock 21, get to 45 ACP, which is plenty powerful for bringing down a person. <laughs> now, there's many complaints that the 10 millimeter ammo is too expensive. It is kind of expensive. It's not that hard to find though, because I've seen it in just about every store I've been in. As far as expensive goes, that don't really bother me because I load my own ammo. If you depend on Walmart for your ammo, or if you depend on retail stores to supply you with your ammo, that might be an issue. But if you make your own ammo, then that don't bother you how much ammo costs. Because I'll just make it. I'll make my own 10 millimeter. I make my own 45. I make my own 9 millimeter. I don't depend on Walmart to supply me with ammo. So that's not a concern to me. But the, the 10 millimeter is readily available. It may cost a few cents more. But that don't really bother me either. There's a bunch of bunch of good hunting rounds you can buy for this a bunch of full power hollow points that'll make this 45 ACP look like a 380 so if you want the most powerful handgun you can get especially from Glock get you a Glock 20 now would you, what would you rather have a 20 or a 21 I've been asked that if you could only have one well if I say get them both they're not that expensive these are not Ed Browns. These are Glocks. They can be picked up fairly cheap. So if you ask me which one to get, I'd say get both. Now, I shot both of them yesterday. I cannot tell any difference in the recoil. I shot them further than I normally would, and my targets here I'm not proud of. This is 10 rounds at 15 yards. I've never shot this gun. This was the first 10 rounds I shot through this gun. The trigger is all stock. Never shot a 10 millimeter at all. So I'm in there. The reason I shot so far away, 15 yards, is 45 feet. That's too far to shoot at a person without getting in trouble. But if I ever did see a bear, I would probably start shooting around 20 yards or so. But that's it's a decent group for being the first time I've ever shot the gun. I've shot my Glock 21 thousands and thousands of rounds, and 
my target's even worse on it at 15 yards. So usually when I'm shooting my 9 millimeters and 45s, I'll shoot it 7 yards, maybe 10 yards. But I stepped it back to 15 yards for these two. And I mainly just wanted to compare the recoil because I'd never shot a 10 millimeter before. And as far as I can tell, there's absolutely no difference. Now, I was using one of my home rolled hot loaded 45 ACP cartridges and I was using an anemic weak store bought 10 millimeter but still the 10 millimeter will have more power I was using a Remington UMC 180 grain full metal jacket 10 millimeter which is just a weak target load but even the weak target load 10 millimeter has more power than my hot loaded 45 I can't get a good they're pretty much the same height 10 millimeter and 45 of course the 10 millimeter is just a 40 caliber bullet but it's uh, coming at a whole lot higher pressure than the 45 it's coming out a whole lot faster and no matter what chart you look at the 10 millimeter will always be on top of the 45 ACP now I know people love their 45 ACPs and there's nothing wrong with it of course but and as I said at the first of this video I wasn't in the market for a 10 millimeter one just happened to come along and it was a deal I couldn't pass up so I thought I would give it a try if I like it I'll start loading it and I may look for a Glock 29 if I don't like it I'll just sell it my 21 I've had for a long time this is also a Gen 3 SF has the Talon grips I've done some work on the trigger I don't carry this it's too big for me to carry but I, I love my Glock 21 and it ain't going anywhere if I learn to love this 10 millimeter, this 20 won't go anywhere. I'll just keep them both. They're both SF models. I like the SF. I'm happy with it. It's still big. It's still ugly, but it's a Glock. It works, and I'm going to stick with them. So a 10 millimeter, you can read lots of bad about it. You'll read lots of good about it. But keep in mind when you're reading or watching videos that a lot of these people writing and talking never owned one never shot one but they still feel the need to bump their gums and tell you their opinion that somebody else told them to tell you what they've heard to tell you what their cousin's uncle told them so don't pay no attention to that look at the charts look at the ballistics and you'll see the 10 millimeter is superior in just about every way to the 45 ACP except maybe price and availability of ammo but if you're depending on Walmart for your ammo, maybe you better stick with the guns that Walmart sells. But the 10 millimeter, I believe, is a cartridge that's interesting, it's powerful, and who knows, I may stick with it, start reloading them. This may be something that I start carrying, the old Glock 29. But that's about all I got to say. Um, thanks for watching my video. And I'm going to keep shooting this and I'll make another video on it after I get a few hundred rounds to it. After I get some real rounds, I'm going to order some buffalo bore or some double tap and see what full power loads feel like out of it. Thanks for watching. That's all I got.